Okay, so I figured I would make a video on my RC-10T as I haven't done uh, a video on this truck in quite some time. Um, I, lately I've been focusing a lot on my uh, the vintage cars that I do have as runners and trying to uh, give them better setups. Because you know I haven't been able to go to a track in quite some time because I got you know small kids, uh, and so I have to find ways to uh, tune the cars without having track time. And you know I do have a reasonably sized basement here. You know it's not that small, and I can set up a little makeshift jump here, so I can like you know jump my car, my buggy, my truck, whatever, and just sort of see how it lands, and then make suspension you know adjustments in the comfort of my own home, you know, independent of what the weather is outside or whether I can get to a track and just sort of make some basic adjustments to the car just to make, you know, whatever car I have jump better, land better, check the handling. So I, I can sort of drive the car around a little bit and see how it handles. Um, so I've been doing that lately with several of my cars. The 10T really comes to mind because this is notorious for slapping the back of the chassis on the ground. And uh, I can go on a long rant about this because <laughs> I spent a, a lot of time on this earlier, like many years ago. Well, many, like what, seven years ago, eight years ago, when I used to run this more often. And uh, I, I couldn't find a perfect solution at the time um, just by tuning the shocks. Because if you're just going to tune the shocks, you basically go to a stiffer spring rate, thicker oil, smaller piston holes, and that could solve the problem a little bit. But then you end up with a suspension that's so stiff, it's very jittery on bumpy surfaces, it's unstable, it doesn't handle quite right. So I want to have a plush feel without also having the chassis slap the ground all the time. And by the way, as a side note, this is one reason why I really like the Kyosho Pro XRT, because it has a, a, a molded chassis rather than a, an aluminum tub chassis, which means it's lighter. And if the chassis is lighter, you're not going to have that problem. And so that gives you a much wider tuning window for your suspension. 10T doesn't have that luxury because it's a heavier aluminum chassis, which it plays some role, but ultimately the rear end of this is, is, a, is a heavier rear end than on the Kyosho. Anyway, there are two things you can do to address this. One thing you can do is, uh, I don't have the part here on me right now, but I do have the part. Uh, the RC10 GT has a little extension piece that mounts to the suspension arm and basically add some holes uh, vertically that you can mount the bottom of the shock to and that basically pushes the arm down to get more droop. If you have more droop you get more travel before the uh, chassis bottoms out. Okay you can solve the problem that way but sometimes you don't want more droop. The thing with more droop is it, it gives you more corner entry steering because as, as you as the when you're on full brakes the weight transfers forward and the rear is going to lift. If you have more droop, the rear lifts even more, which you might want that, but if you don't want that, then having more droop will make the car oversteer into the corner, okay? So what you really want to be able to do is to have the ability to change the shock geometry without affecting droop. And on the original RC10T towers, you just had these four holes here. So if you mount it on this hole right here, which, give, which would give you the most laid down shock geometry, if you wanted to lay it down even more, you had to mount the bottom of the shock to the outside arm, or the outside hole in the arm, which would lift the arm and reduce droop. So you get the lay down shock geometry, which is a more progressive rate, should help you with uh, chassis slapping, but then you're lifting the arm, you're dropping droop, and that's gonna cancel out. So what you gotta do is you take these two holes here, and you draw a diagonal, a straight line, across those holes, projecting outwards. And I drilled from the center of this hole to this hole here, it's five millimeters, and you drill a hole, and that's your new mounting position. Uh, this is, it's not perfect, but it's a substantial improvement in uh, uh, landing performance compared to mounting the shock here. Okay, so, you know, in the past, if I did like the drop test, the rear would just slap the ground, and now I could drop it from a much, uh, you know, taller height, and it's perfectly fine. So, something you might want to try, uh, as far as like doing custom work to affect impact the rear shock geometry on your RC10T, um, 
yeah, I guess that's about it. So thanks for watching.